friends, you know? Yeah, for sure. So, yes, I like that okay. idea. All right. <laughs> Teresa, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Erica. Thank you. Yeah. I'm so happy to see you today. It's so wonderful to see you too. Yeah. Yeah. And I know me and you are both really passionate about grief and supporting people through grief. And so today I thought I'd ask you, um, like, what brought you to grief work? <laughs> such a long story thanks for asking <laughs> um you know my childhood was very challenging there were a lot of years where there was trauma going on through abuse but I'm not sure as a child that I really registered any of that as something I would grieve like then or later, you know, it was just too young to really understand. Mm -hmm. But then my grandmother died when I was 13 and that was my mom's mom. And then two years later, my mom died. Mm -hmm. And that's really where obviously I felt a lot of grief, but I was unfortunately also introduced to this feeling of not feeling safe to grieve and it was almost like my family members were so worried about me and they didn't know what to do with me um they wanted to like force me to be okay does that make mm -hmm. sense yeah yeah and Additionally, I mean, now I was left in a house with the two people that abused me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was very uncomfortable and I felt very unsafe. And then on top of that, like I had lost my mom. And so at nighttime was the hardest time for me. She and I used to talk before her bed. And so then I'm, I just have no, I felt like I had no one you know, and I really missed her. She was my mom. Yeah. And we were very close. I hadn't reached an age of rebellion. So we were just really close and didn't fight about things and could talk about anything pretty much. And I remember crying at night, like, you know, like grief crying, like wailing mm -hmm. and kind of yelling and not words, just like loud deep wailing grief I had to get it out of my body it certainly wasn't safe to do at the funeral but then the doctor my dad couldn't sleep so the doctor told my dad to give me a drug to make me stop crying uh -huh. and I can't remember what it was called like Xanax or Zoloft or I don't know I have no idea I was 1989 <laughs> and it's forced me to stop crying and then I would go to sleep so that was the first time and then it happened the next night where I'm wailing and he gives me a pill and it shut down my body's ability to cry and then I felt internally all of that grief just transformed into rage and that really terrified me so I decided right then that I would not cry anymore about her death like not in a way that anyone could hear me and that was just one little piece of the well, story from my childhood yeah and that right there is a, a lot to hold especially as a child yeah um, yeah it's a tough time to lose a parent you know your teen mm -hmm. years um but I am 50 now, so <laughs> I've made some progress in that. And my mom has been with me and visited me, like visitations, mm -hmm. and healed me when I had pneumonia. Like she came and held my hand and she sent me the light and healed me. So there's that. And then she also has come to a few dreams. And then one time I was receiving body work from someone else. Mm -hmm. And I felt her touch my forehead. It was like right here. And, oh. and I knew it was her. And I just felt unconditional love just through my whole body. And so I'm like weeping with love. 
And then the practitioner says, your mom is here. And I'm like, can barely talk. I know. Right. And she said, she's at your head. And I'm like, I know. And so it was so validating and confirming that she could tell as well as me, obviously in the experience of feeling her with me in her mm -hmm. spirit form. So I have felt very comforted. It took 20 so years before I could really feel her presence with me and start having these experiences. Mm. But it's been a tremendous blessing and it's really helped me like part of my healing path with grieving her loss specifically. Mm. How beautiful. What a beautiful yeah. experience to share with another human and you're right. Like sometimes, you know, we think, well, am I crazy? Did I really feel that? Did I really hear mm. her? Or, but to have somebody else there to validate it. Yeah. That's one of the things about life I'm so fascinated about is that there's so much more space and energy around us than there is physical form. Right. And so it's, um, it's always a fascinating concept to explore and be curious about. Yes, it's yeah. beautiful. It really is. And you know, like you said, with the practitioner, I did have someone there to validate. Mm -hmm. But when she saved my life, like I was alone. And mm -hmm. so I can't prove that, that I was either dead or almost dead, right? But I know she came to me and held my hand and I could feel what a hand feels like, you know, the skin and the bone structure and the texture and we talked to each other like it was an appointment. Mm -hmm. Like when I saw her, I said, hi, mom, it's time for you to send me the light now. And she just smiled and she said, I know. And she took my hand and I could see the light coming through her, like just right into my hand. And then I was like, <laughs> like totally healed from wow. the pneumonia. So um, it's a testament to part of our life experience being pre-designed in some way in ways that we couldn't possibly understand for whatever reason here like we don't get to know all the things but for right. sure that was something that we knew was going to be happening in my life and it was an important shift for me yeah yeah thank you so much for sharing um, you're so welcome <laughs> I would love to hear the same for you. Like what has brought you to this grief work? And like, it's our personal work that we work through our own grief, right? And also being a support to others. Yeah, I definitely think um, that's one of the blessings, right? Of this work. There's been many things throughout my life. I mean, you know, the more I talk to people, the more I realize like, wow, none of us really have it as easy as we make it seem, right? Like all of us have some things that have really happened. And so, you know, as a young child, I didn't feel the most support from my mom. She was really like checked out, numbed out, shut down, overwhelmed, I'm sure, right? Yeah. As, as I get older in life, I start to understand her, <laughs> uh, her situation a little bit more. Yeah. But um. Yeah, I ended up moving with friends when I was a young girl, 14 years old, um, my freshman year in high school, living with my friend and her brother, her brothers and her, um, her mom and stepdad. And there was, at the time, I was like, wow, I'm so independent. I'm so mature. This is so awesome. And I carried that kind of story with me for a very, very long time until later in life when I I realized how much hurt and grief I was experiencing over, you know, my parents really just kind of letting me be. And looking back 2020, there is such a blessing in like me being able to just be who I am. And I explored all these different witchy ways and um, free spirit, you know, activities. <laughs> Yes. Um, so there, there are blessings too in that, right? And there's a lot of beauty in being able to see like, oh, that really helped form who I am. And if I yes. love myself, then really that's a blessing, you know. But moving on to later in life, um, I was married in my mid-20s and then we couldn't conceive and I fell into depression and then we ended up getting a divorce. You know, there was betrayal. 
Mm -hmm. And I was really that like really hit me hard. I just wasn't myself. I had gained a lot of weight Mm -hmm. um, from depression and just binge eating ice cream. (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) Console myself. Um, and I met my first healer. My friend was like, Oh, go see my friend Lori. And, and I did. And I, I learned about our visualization channel and our inner world. And I like started to tap into that. And it's like a whole other space. And I was like, wow, all of this is inside me. I want to teach people how to do that for themselves too. And so I started studying hypnotherapy. This would have been like 2005, 2006. Um, And then, you know, a couple of years later, I was blessed with a baby boy and yeah it's just so fascinating you know how life ends up working out and he's like my sweetheart he is really just like a great a great human being um and then you know my dad was helping me raise my son quite a bit we lived pretty close to each other my dad was always my person right like he was my buddy we would go shoe pool and smoke our cigarettes and have a beer (laughs) put on music in the jukebox we would talk about spirituality and life and cars I would hold the flashlight while he would you know change the battery or I'd hand him the little lug nuts or whatever they are you're changing a tire um yeah he um he was a very accepting and fun loving person and we just had a really a really unique tight bond and um it must have been like 2012 ish when he was diagnosed with dementia And, you know, shortly thereafter, we started, you know, noticing the signs of him just not being himself. And now Mm -hmm. it's been about 12 years of him going through his dementia to Alzheimer's journey. Okay. And just, there's so many little losses in that time of just like, oh, they can't communicate the same way. Oh, they're just not themselves to oh, they really can't talk at all. They can't move their body. They don't remember like how to eat or Mm. feed themselves or how to move from one place to another. And there's just like so many little losses over time that Mm -hmm. I was really, this would have been, I don't know, a couple of years ago, my grandmother had a stroke and she was another, you know, support person. And then 2016, my dad's, my dad's diagnosis got quite a bit. You could really tell he was time to stop driving. It was time to like, really Mm -hmm. watch what he was doing. And then my best him and others. Yeah. Yeah. My best friend was diagnosed with cancer and it was like, oh, both of my two people, those are my two people. I had a very tight circle. I didn't let a whole lot of people in from things that had happened throughout my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I found myself like really lonely and grieving and trying to escape with like drinking too much and, um, kind of numbing out. And then that lasted about two years. And then I started on a yoga therapy journey, really attuning to the body was beautiful. Right. And really liberating. And at the same time, it stirred up some trauma that was held in my body And behind that trauma was a lot of grief that I wasn't able to really cope with or deal. I guess I didn't have the tools because our society is not like grief friendly or even aware, right? Yeah. I think we're just now starting to see the effects of um, so many people being lonely and isolated because they've shared their grief in unsafe spaces Mm -hmm. or just haven't felt safe to even share it at all. And yeah. Like it's time to change that. Like there's so many of us that are experiencing that or have and have kind of gathered tools and resources and right. um, Yeah. So I'm really excited to be actually sharing grief work with other people because I believe it's one of the core things of our country suffering, you know. Mm -hmm. I think when you can really Yeah. Yeah, one of them. Yeah. Mm 
But when you can really hold mm -hmm. space for another person and allow whatever their experience is to be okay. Um, yeah. It's really gentle, loving, kind power. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. for everybody involved, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. So a lot of little kind of like ups and downs, ups and downs, ups and downs. Mm -hmm. yeah. I heard a whole lot. Oh right my there. gosh. Yes. <laughs> but, like right now, my dad is in, um, I would say a health crisis. Like I'm mm -hmm. very concerned because it's his blood pressure. He doesn't have dementia, mm -hmm. but his blood pressure has been going up to like 150 to 170 and they can't get it down and they don't know why it's up, meaning medical doctors, you know, and he's also mm -hmm. having panic attacks because he's a Vietnam vet mm -hmm. and <clears throat> he's in another state. So it's not that I can go visit him all that easily. But, you know, earlier today, I just, or was it last night? I don't know. I just like ugh, cried. Like it just like grief came in and I just cried but then it, you know, dissipated. And then I can have these moments in life, you know, either with my child or I mean, child, he's 22, my youngest, but, <laughs> but like these really fun moments, you know, where I feel good and, and I'm having a great mm -hmm. present moment. And yeah. then the thought will just come in like, how's your dad? You know what I mean? Like, how's mm -hmm. dad? And just having that dream this morning that it was a beautiful dream actually it was very peaceful and it was very loving where I was in my childhood home and he I'm his only blood child like I have an older half brother that's we have the same mother and I have a younger stepbrother but I'm his only blood birth child <laughs> It's the same yes. with my dad. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Um, and in this dream, you know, he's telling me I it's time for me to die. I like he's going to go to the hospital and he's telling me it's time for me to die. And I want you to be with me. I want you to come with me. I, I want you to be with me when I die. And I was like, of course, dad, of course. Like the dream was just so peaceful and loving and supportive. Like, of course I'm here for you. I would never not be here for you if, you know, in real life, if I have all the means and all that to be yeah. there. <laughs> but even so, I woke up with this feeling like even if physically I couldn't be there, like he can come to me in spirit, like mm -hmm. I can be with him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, um, but at the same time, it's also just got me grieving I guess pre-grieving grieving ahead of time mm -hmm. for what may or may not come to pass soon or 10 20 years from now like I don't actually know when or if he's going to pass you know mm -hmm. what I mean I do and so it's that that yeah anticipatory grief <laughs> grief yeah yes and Yes. I love that you shared though, that, right. There's times that are really joyful and like easy. And I think the beauty of doing grief work is being able to hold and be okay with the heaviness and allow yes. ourselves to cry. Right. Yes. And then at this, on the flip side, being able to hold so much love and so much joy and, and so much bliss yeah. and connection, like Right. As you as you tap in more to the grief realm, you're also able to then tap more into the joy and bliss field as well. Right. And and then you find okay. yourself more centered, right? Mm -hmm. Like you yes. realize, like, oh, this is a wave. Oh, this is a wave. And it's okay. And you know that yes. you know, you'll be yes. okay. And you know, I feel I'm sure you've heard the analogy of pushing a beach ball under the water mm. takes a lot of energy, right? Mm -hmm. You can only do it for so long. And I think part of the benefit of grief work is I'm not trying to suppress mm -hmm. my feelings. Like if we're going to have a wave of grief, we're going to have a wave of grief. You know what I mean? But yeah. I think because I can allow it to come out in its full force, mm -hmm. it, it is like a storm and there is a calm after it that is surprisingly very peaceful and opens up 
my heart to just feel and yeah. enjoy the moments of life with my son or like tonight I'm going to be with my granddaughter you know like yeah I can really enjoy those moments because I'm not using all my energy to suppress grief yeah or anything else really a like great analogy yeah it's a beautiful analogy Thank and you. I think I know for me I was in that like trying to force it down and then I was really yes. stuck and really numb yes. and then I couldn't feel sadness, but I also couldn't feel joy. And I started to just get really wound tight in my body and my mind and my spirit. Yeah. And eventually, you know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people get scared to do this work because they think, oh, well, if I let that go, it's going to be a huge volcano. I'm going to be crying for months or years or whatever. Right. The story like, it will never stop. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like that, right? Yeah. But it does, right? It does. I've had mm -hmm. seasons where I've been a little more teary more than others. Yeah. But as you start to get comfortable with crying again, like you said, it really does feel like sweet peace and relief mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you had mentioned that you were using numbing behaviors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I went through a severe trauma in 2011 where... Mm -hmm. I was, I don't want to be too graphic, but there was a gun involved and I was attacked and mm -hmm. violated. And after that, I think I went pretty numb for a while, but still trying to force myself to just move on and not grieve, but not, not do anything, no processing. I'm just like taking care of my kids, like getting them to school, going to my millions of jobs, like, you yeah. know, like ignore, Survival ignore, mode. ignore until yeah. one day I remember just collapsing. And I literally said, I give up. Like I just yelled it out. Like I just give up. And then from that point I gained probably a hundred pounds mm -hmm. and, um, lots of nightmares for I would say seven years I had nightmares um it was every night every single night mm -hmm. it took me a really long time to get to a point where I then could really just take charge of what was happening with me and say you know what God's spirit universe I'm done with all of this my decision is made I want nothing but illumination. Like mm. I want to experience a higher perspective. I want to heal this. I'm done with this. And from that moment, I started finding every answer I needed. And within two or so months, I was able to really pull out of it and start making some progress. And now I've been working with someone like a coach a nutrition and fitness coach and I've been able to handle all of the emotions that come up mm -hmm. whether I'm stretching and having an emotional release mm -hmm. or I'm like in the middle of this experience with my dad and I'm working out and like suddenly I'm crying and I'm like awesome movement let's do it like yeah. just using whatever tool I need to to keep taking care of myself no matter what is happening in my life is a huge growth for me yeah, you know, as a human, experiencing all the turmoil of life the turbulence that we experience yeah yeah, yeah. I that you shared that and I would say I'm on a similar path it's been the last five or so years of really learning what is it that Erica needs like you know, I've always been attuned to everybody else. And I think especially as mothers and mm -hmm. women, it's mm -hmm. easy to attune to others, right? And tend to yeah. their needs. And we tend to put ourselves on the back burner because we can right. pee later, we can drink later, we just got to handle this, <laughs> handle that. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's like the more that I do tend to my physical body and what my body needs, what my yes. mind needs, what my heart needs, like, oh, yes. okay, life's actually pretty, pretty good. And then you meet really incredible people like yourself. Like, I'm so <laughs> grateful that 
we were able to meet yeah. and connect with ease. And I don't know that I formally oh, so much so. introduced you. I would love <laughs> to maybe share this with, with people eventually. Yeah. Uh, Teresa Guti Gutierrez, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, my dad's family is from Mexico. You can't okay. tell I'm very white. Yeah. <laughs> and that's my mom's side. She's um gosh, what are we? Scottish, Welsh, Irish, you know, plus, you know, the half that's from Mexico, there's also Spain, northern Spain, you know. Mm -hmm. So I do have a lot of pale and I have a lot of native, like 20% of my DNA is native from Mexico and my maiden name is Gutierrez because oh. I can't speak Spanish ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> maybe but, we could learn that together yeah, sometime I, yeah I tried. it'd be fun but I think it's Gutierrez or something mm. more Hispanically pronounced but mm -hmm. yes Beautiful. that's my dad's family and my mother no my great grandmother on my dad's mother's side was a curandera from Mexico. Mm. And so when I found that out, you know, because I've been an herbalist for 27 years and yeah. I've been in this spiritual healing, like energy healing, right? Mm -hmm. for, I don't know, almost as long as I've had kids as well. <laughs> right. Slightly less, but still a long time. And when I found that out, because my cousin does a lot of genealogy mm -hmm. it's like my whole life finally made sense I made sense to me because mm -hmm. I'm like she was probably the one whispering in my ear this whole time <laughs> just the plants you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> this one's gonna work great you know like it's just I really feel like she has been a big part of my journey with especially plant medicine but I definitely feel all my ancestors have done all the work they could to keep me alive throughout mm -hmm. all of my healing processes from, you know, the childhood stuff to the mm -hmm. current stuff and feeling super blessed and surrounded by family and mm -hmm. angels. Beautiful. Yeah. That's an incredible, incredible family history. I love that you dug into it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a whole journey, too, that had to do with that shamanic grief ritual I went to, I told you about. Mm, yeah. But I do think it's interesting that how we met is because I had client after client after client after client that I'm doing this, you know, the energy work and, mm -hmm. and energy healing, and I'm feeling the physical pain, sure, but underneath it, the emotions underneath it. And then it's like, oh my goodness, this is grief right here. And then I bring it up and they're like, yes. And then, you know, the story comes out and it's like, wow, my people need a grief ritual. Yeah. Like, like I got to go to, like, that was an incredibly healing experience to do a shamanic grief ritual. And I have other friends and colleagues in this healing world, but none of them are in a place in life that they can put time and energy into supporting people in that way. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, universe, fine. I'll do it myself if I have to. But if you have anyone in mind, like you want to make this easy for me, because I don't want to do this alone. I feel like when you support people with grief in a group way mm -hmm. it's really nice to have more than one facilitator you know most, what I mean? definitely. most definitely yes and I within days a day was so short that I got that message from the networking community we're both on mm -hmm. and I think I reached out to you first yeah like, oh my gosh <laughs> yeah yeah. Isn't thank it you wild? For being open. Yeah. Thank you for reaching out and being open. And I'm in the same boat where it's like, I want to support people. And I have been supporting people and I've done some stuff by myself and I've done some stuff with a partner. And it just feels more peaceful, inviting, and supportive when it is two facilitators holding space because. Mm -hmm. Just the two, we create something bigger. And then the people that are called to be with us and kind of 
work through this season or chapter, yes. it feels even more nourishing and and safe for them too. So yes. yeah, what a blessing that we were able to connect and both have the capacity right. and desire yes. to really and serve live so other. close to each other. Yeah. Like, because this, this um, networking thing that we're both on, I mean, it's international, is it not? <laughs> I think so. so it's you're... definitely, it's definitely all over down the, the US, street, <laughs> but it could be international. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's great. I love it. I'm so grateful. <sighs> yeah. So I guess, you know, if people are watching this and they want to find out, well, how can I work with these two? Mm. Um, do you have, where would you direct people to for you personally for like one-on-one -on -one okay. stuff? Well, I have a website. It's 11thhourshaman.com. So that's the digits, one, one, T-H, mm. and then another H, O-U-R, <laughs> S-H-A-M-A-N.com or dot org. It doesn't matter. I have both of those. Beautiful. Yeah. Or my email is Teresa, T-H-E-R-E-S-A at 11thhourshaman.com. And the 11th hour is because I noticed a lot of people, you know, they try everything else first mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh, maybe a shaman could help me like that kind of thing. Maybe I need something else uh -huh. or, you know, they feel like it's their, their last like their last chance to really get some help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I chose 11th hour. Cause even in the 11th hour spirits here for us, healing is available to us. Miracles happen every single day, all over the world. Yes. yes. And so it is. Yes. I love that. I got goosebumps just thinking about it. <laughs> and Absolutely. then for me, for Erica, you can find more information on my website as well, www.ericafaith.com. And then Teresa and I are looking to build like a grief circle community for women um, to come together and grow, heal, and share together. So definitely be on the lookout for more information and feel free to reach out to either one of us or both of us and and... Yeah. yeah, thank I'm you. Teresa. Really looking forward to that support. To yeah, that's like providing that support, you know, with the framework that we are creating, and um, I think it's going to be really nourishing. I it guess is the best word I can think of is so nourishing. Yes, we have a little bit of movement and somatics and herbalism and shamanism and mm. meditations and just information and resources and it is going to be so nourishing I'm really looking forward to yeah to being with you and thank those you. who desire to come and join us so. me too thank you yeah well thank you so much for your time today Teresa thank you and any last things you'd like to share or say or you know I think a lot of times when people are in the middle of grief they feel like their life has ended or mm. they for me anyway I wished I had gone in the grave with my mom like I had those thoughts like I wish mm -hmm. I could just get in a coffin with her and just go with her you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I think symbolically when we lose someone we love if that's the particular way we come to grief symbolically a lot of us might still have a foot in the grave and we don't know how to get it out mm -hmm. and really feel that we can find joy again and we really can fall in love with our lives again mm -hmm. that there are things and people and relationships and purpose like if we if we're alive we still have a purpose you know what I mean yeah. and and I feel like doing grief work either one-on-one -on -one or in community can really help people get their foot out of the grave mm -hmm. or heal whatever trauma you know has come upon them mm -hmm. that they can move forward with safety with support and with hope 
Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I think it's true for the grief that comes with trauma, right? Our trauma tells us I'll always be messed up. I'll always yeah. be this way. I was diagnosed with this or I was diagnosed yes. with that. And, you yeah. know, I've seen that, that means something we, really right. and dark. And we believe it, right? Yeah. And then, but once we're exposed to like, oh, there's all these other ways of like, expressing and learning and living and dealing and coping mm -hmm. and there's other ways to believe and other paths to take yes it's really powerful for people to know that there's a, a huge wellspring of support and loving kindness as we're healing you know yes. grief and trauma a lot of the times they're intertwined not always but mm -hmm. a lot of the times so a lot yeah. of the times yes and okay. that just makes me want to just call to my heart and just say <clears throat> that I'm sending energy that may we all be happy may we all be healthy may we all be free from inner and outer harm and may we all be well and find our people. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, Shay. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah. Have a good day. You too. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. bye.